Today, I'm inviting you to join me in my online studio for a full 60-minute reformer class. Hey guys, and welcome in for another reformer class. Let's get our body moving in athletic, helpful ways that make us feel strong and also restorative in movement. Let's go ahead and set the bar, our foot bar up. We're going to start with our footwork. We're going to change things up today by including a lot of bottom lift from different positions while we're doing footwork. So let's go ahead and set up for your favorite weight for footwork. I prefer two heavies and a medium, so two reds and a green on my reformer. That gives me enough to push off of without feeling like there's just tons of pressures on my shoulders when I'm pressing away and feels overall good. So sometimes heavier is not always better. If you get more function and mobility a little bit lighter and it feels more comfortable and doesn't cause any discomfort later in negative ways, then that can be the best way to go. Let's go ahead and bring our feet to the bar, we're going to come to parallel feet about hip distance apart, and we're going to just place arches onto the bar right here to begin. We're going to get ourselves moving here. Really concentrate as you press out, push out straight through the legs without locking out, and when we come back in to bend the whole way deeply back in. We're going to take about 10 repetitions in each position. If you feel your legs fatiguing and like that's too much, you can take five to eight and then pause and have a rest in between. Let's stay parallel and go up to the toes. Here when you're on your toes and you're pressing further away, you might have to think a little bit more of coming the whole way into the stopper rather than stopping short and letting yourself come the whole way back in. And now we're going to move to parallel heels, placing those heels onto the bar, pressing out from here. We really get our legs and our feet and our ankles at all angles here. Now we're going to take our bottom lift from this foot position, heels on the bar, legs parallel. We're going to press that low back into the carriage and we're going to peel up one vertebrae at a time, lifting those hips nice and high, and then roll back down. So taking our bottom lift with different leg and feet positions is going to help us to feel and target in different spots in our legs, glutes, from our hands, hamstrings to our quads. We're just going to feel this in different positions. And we'll bring that down right here. And we're going to change position and come to V heels now on the bar. So heels to the bar, feet in the little V, pressing out, returning in. changing here we're going to go to the toes pressing out so the skills are nice and high Good, 
drawing the carriage back and we're gonna bottom lift here with our toes on the bar, the heels. So you may find, I notice when I come into bottom lift here, that I have to press the carriage out just a little bit to start that lift. Think about articulating up through the spine, one vertebrae at a time, really pressing those hips up high, and then melting down one vertebrae at a time. Good, now switching to wide the heels to the bar. Crossing out here. transitioning to wide feet, toes, keeping those heels nice and high. And really thinking here about pulling that carriage the whole way into the stopper. those feet so just the middle of the foot the arches are there on the bar and from here we're going to bottom lift up and melt back down you're going to feel this differently in the back of your legs and in your glutes from this position One more here. Good. Now, let's bring those feet parallel and we're going to come to the arches of the bar. We're going to go through a single leg. So the other leg, we're just going to keep floating here in a tabletop position. We're going to press up and draw back in. Don't rush it. Really feel that control, a full muscle pressing the whole way out, and then drawing back in. We're not letting that carriage fly back in. We're slowly coming back in. Good, switching legs, a great way to intensify the weight on the legs without so much pressure on the shoulders pulling all those springs away when you want to go heavy is to take one leg at a time. The same thing happens when we take one arm at a time, which we'll experience later in the class. Same amount of weight, just being shouldered by one leg. some full body integration exercises and we're going to leave our foot bar up high. Now yours might not come up perfectly vertical like this, not all reformers do, some are out towards an ankle, but we're going to leave it at our highest setting for ourselves today and we're going to be targeting those exercises that really get into that deep core, long stretch, down stretch, uh, knee stretch, uh, reverse knee stretch, elephant, 
So we're going to come down to one heavy spring. And we're actually, for the remainder of class, going to stay on one heavy spring for quite some time. So let's start out with that long stretch. We're going to come into our plank position. And we're going to place the feet so they're up on the heels, are up on the shoulder blocks, and shoulders are coming over top of those wrists. Now we're going to hinge from the shoulder point joint and press away as long as we can, and then draw back in. All the while, we want to maintain this nice plank shape. So we don't want to change the shape of the spine or lift the hips while we're doing this. We want to stay in that plank, and the hinge is coming from the shoulder joint. So you may find that just a little movement is good. You may find that you can press yourself back quite a ways while maintaining that shape and give yourself a little hold and draw back in. Coming from one heavy spring is much easier than being on a medium or a light because it actually keeps you tethered. We're going to use that to our advantage today. You can play with all different types of springs, but you can make this as challenging as possible. So on a heavy, you might be able to push yourself back further and get more range, and that's fantastic. So we just change up the way we work. stretch. So we're going to drop those knees. We're going to lift the chest up high and we're going to press back in the way and keeping that back straight and hinging from the waist, keeping those feet against the shoulder blocks. And then we're going to lift all the way up, thinking about pulling up nice and tall here and then pressing back in the way. Now, changing gears here as we come into that knee stretch, rather than holding that plank position, we've got a hinge at the hips and we're sitting back so those knees are coming forward. Then we press the knees back and away and then tuck them in. So we've got that hinge back, bum comes back, and we come to the seated position where we feel like our weight is over our heels. Press back and away, and this is gonna feel like holding a plank right here, and then we tuck the knees back in. I'm going to keep a flat back for this. Because we can do this exercise with a round back and in different positions. Really want you to be purposeful with each repetition. Five more here. Hold that core in time. Last one. Good. Now we're going to go into that reverse knee stretch, where rather than pressing the knees back and away, we're tucking them forward. So we're going to come. Place the knees up against the shoulder rest. We're going to reach out forward. So we've got our wrists underneath our shoulders. And now we're going to tuck the knees in, pulling them into the hands, and then opening back out.
you're gonna feel that all throughout your abdominals, but we feel it in particular really low as we use those muscles to pull the knees in and you get that crunch down low here. Next, we're gonna hop up for elephant. So, I'm gonna place our hands about shoulder distance on that bar. We're gonna walk our heels back so that they're up against the shoulder rest. And we're really gonna use that core and that full body strength to pull ourselves in. So we're gonna allow our body to stretch back here. Huge stretch through the calves and the back of the leg. Now use that core, rather than moving the spine, we're gonna hinge at the waist, use the core to pull those feet back into position with underneath the hips and pull that stopper into a close. Now stretch back and away and pull back in. You can feel your back, your abdominals, that big stretch. You can hear my heels sliding around on this material here. You'll feel your arms working. Two more here. This is a great mobility movement and total body strength. Lots of muscles working together to make this movement happen. It might not look like much, but it certainly can feel very beneficial, particularly if you get tight through the back of your legs, tight calves, tight hamstrings. That one's also good if you suffer from plantar fasciitis throughout your feet, which has a lot to do with your calf muscles as well. So stretching them out there um, can have nice rewarding things for your feet as well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and place this foot bar all the way down, just to move it out of the way. And we're gonna stay on one red spring. We're gonna turn around and face back and place our body about in the middle of our carriage. Knees about hip distance apart, just come to a comfortable stance. And we're gonna be in a high kneeling position. We're gonna grab onto our handles. Now you can choose to use the outer straps or the inner straps. You're just gonna get more resistance if you come to those shorter straps here. And we're beginning, going to begin our arm exercises from this high kneeling place. So in other words, we want to press those hips forward. We want to feel this body active, holding us up, tight glutes, tight through the quads, tight through the core to hold ourselves while that carriage moves in space and while we target the arms. We're going to start with chest expansion. Roll those shoulders down and back. Already when you come to seated starting position, you're going to feel a carriage slide forward. And we're going to press those hands back beyond the hips and then release forward. You're going to feel a strong through the core, through the back of the arms, right here especially. Press and release. Gentle slide. Let's take a couple more here. transition into a bicep curl. So I'm going to turn those palms facing upward and we're going to curl in towards the forehead and then release back out. You may find that naturally you take a little lean back. Think about keeping those hips pressing forward and a little lean back as you do so. Nice and smooth on the pull up and the release. Nice long body. Few more here. One more. 
Good. Now we're going to do a little, a little switch up on our chest expansion. We're going to think about that same openness, but we're going to allow ourselves a hip hinge. So when we pull back, we're going to allow those hips to come down over top of the heels. And then as we lift forward and release the arms, we're going to actively press those hips forward. So you're going to be feeling it in that lower body. So if you weren't using the springs at all, just this active press forward. Really need to squeeze those glutes, work through those quads, send those hips forward. We're just going to involve the arms just in that chest expansion way. Palms facing back. Good range of motion for those knees. If you're feeling like it's too much pressure through the kneecap and you're really feeling it in a negative way through the joint, then put those hand straps back and just do this motion of kneeling down and pressing forward without any weight. Two more. Good, next we're gonna go into some diagonal arms. So rather than being straight or locking out of the elbow, we're gonna be kind of round at the elbow. Take one arm up and one arm down in a diagonal line, and then switch sides. You're gonna feel this in your upper back and your shoulders. Remember, it's an unfolding and then a folding back in together. Don't let it pull and then slide back in too fast. Let's take one more each side. Good. Now, bring that left arm down. We're going to row with a single arm. Thumb up towards the sky, we're going to pull in and then release back. So we can intensify this, we're already intensifying it by just one arm. I'm going to slide my knees to the edge of the carriage so my feet are hanging off and then row in and release. Keep those shoulders square, chest facing forward. about playing a smart here. We don't want to like release here and then pull back and twist. Keep it right where it is. Squeeze that elbow so it's tight toward the rib cage and you're feeling that squeeze in the back and then release. Two more. Good. Bring that in and down. Let the carriage close. Switch sides. Row in, keep that elbow or the shoulder stable where it is. Let the elbow slide close to the body as if you were doing a bent over row with a hand weight.
those start to add up, don't they? Now, next I'm going to show you on this side with me facing you, and then I'm going to turn around so I can switch arms. Um, so you want to give this arm that you just worked a break and switch to the other side. We're going to come side kneeling, grab a hold of that loop so the strap is coming with the arm in front of you, and we're going to take that elbow and drive it out and then release back in. So you're gonna get that pec working, you're gonna get that arm working, the shoulder right there. We're gonna hold nice and steady while we do so. So still a high kneel right here. So I'm gonna switch sides to alternate my arms working. And we're just gonna lift up tall so you feel that elbow pulling across your body. And then you're gonna drive it out towards the wall and release back in. that in, burning, let's change sides. Here we are, pulling it across. Couple more. Last one. Whew. Well done. Roll those shoulders out. Squeeze the shoulder blades together in the back. Moving our focus next to supine abdominals, lying on the back on our reformer. I'm staying on one heavy spring, and we're going to come back, lie down, we're going to reach up and grab those straps, holding on to the long loop here. We're going to float our legs up in your tabletop position, and our first exercise is going to be the 100 prep. So we're going to peel up head, neck, and shoulders, press those palms down while we stretch the legs away to 45 degrees and then we're going to lower everything back out and back down at the same time if you feel like the legs reaching out is too much some other alternative options can be to reach the legs up to 90 degrees and return down or to keep them in tabletop and keep that focus so when we're peeling up head neck and shoulders we're getting at the top right here into the rectus abdominis when we reach those legs away, we feel that we get into that transversus that wraps around. We get into like the lower areas here. So you can take this to whatever level you need. We're gonna keep that neutral spine and we don't want the back to be moving around like this. All right, here we go. Don't rush through it. We're gonna press out a little hold and draw everything back in. Point those toes, keep the legs set together. Ooh, 
bring that back in, let the carriage close, and bring the straps down. Now, we're going to do the rollover here. So we won't, won't be using any straps at all. I'm going to place my feet to the bar for just a moment. We're going to take those hands and either hold onto the shoulder rest or hold on to the metal part where your straps come on. So rather than placing the hands down, we're going to reach them up here and give ourselves a little bit of leverage, which will make us move slightly differently. Float those legs back up into tabletop. We're going to lengthen those legs out towards 45 degrees and peel up one vertebrae at a time. Now, you can just be really perpendicular here. If you're stretched out, you can reach down into that carriage. Now we're going to separate the legs, flex through the feet, and roll back down one vertebrae at a time. Lengthen the legs up, point through the toes, draw them together. Let's do it again. Separate the heels about hip distance apart, not too wide. Flex through the feet and roll back down one vertebrae at a time. It's okay if you feel your arms gripping and doing some work here as well. Really concentrate on peeling up one vertebrae at a time, melting down one vertebrae at a time rather than thrusting over. Let's take one more just like this. Now, we're going to change up the legs. So we're gonna have them separated while we roll over, together while we roll down. We point as we roll over, we flex the heel as we roll down. So point the legs, take them hip distance apart, roll over. Now, draw the legs in together, flex through the heels, and roll back down. You're gonna feel that differently through your spine and your core. One more. Whew. Draw those knees into the chest. Give yourself a little hug and a little rock from side to side. Wonderful articulation while needing and providing so much core control. Whew. into the obliques and a little stretching here. We're going to lift up our bar. So I'm coming. If this is the highest, let's come down to two. So we're not all the way to the lowest. We're one up from there. And you can play around with this with what you feel comfortable. We're going to come into a Z sit. So we've got one leg in front, the other one wrapping back behind. If that's uncomfortable for your knees, you can sit cross-legged as well. We're going to place that hand to the bar, and we're going to reach out and away, lift up and out of the hip here, and fold over into that mermaid. That, feel that pull in here. One more. Good, and let's turn over to the other side. keeping your hips and shoulders square.
Good. So we've already been working through those legs and lower body. Now we're really going to get into standing leg exercises where we target the glutes and the adductors and all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and lower my foot bar the whole way down, which locks my carriage center into place. And I'm going to keep on one heavy spread. Most of the time when I'm doing skating exercises, I'll have on a medium, maybe a medium and a light. Today I'm just going to keep on one heavy for that weight. And we're going to come standing up. Now, while it's one heavy spring, you can see that it easily glides across the room. So, I want to always be careful in what we're doing. I'm going to place my foot on the carriage extender, try to line my feet up, and bring this one that's on the carriage relatively close to the edge. Now, right here, I'm going to bend gently through my knees, and I'm going to take that foot that's on the outside, that's on the moving carriage, and that's going to be my one that I push straight and then bend back in. Everything else stays stable and steady. One more, and then we're going to switch up the legs. I'm going to straighten my leg that's on the extender, push that one straight, and then bend back in. This one on the carriage stays straight. Sometimes it takes a little bit of coordination to focus on just pushing one leg straight and bending that back in. Think about sending yourself across the room with that leg powerful. to switch up the legs, which can feel powerful, freeing, all those good things, but sometimes we have to focus our brain for it. So staying bent through the knees, we're going to take the outside leg on the carriage, and then we'll take the leg that's on the carriage extender. So we're just going to switch those legs back and forth. One more each side. Good, now we're gonna bring those legs straight and we're gonna push out into a squat. So as we come out, we're bending those knees, squatting down, and then we're gonna lift up and draw that carriage back in. So think about squeezing both the legs together, squatting down and squeezing back in. So those hips come out, booty comes out, and then we squeeze that forward on the way up. And bring that carriage to a close as you come up too. Those toes facing forward. One more. Good. From here, we're going to go into middle splits. Now, this is a pretty heavy weighted middle split, so we're not going for length and flexibility. We're using those muscles to push out and draw back in. So, heavy through the muscles here. Good. Now, how we experience when 
we're standing here and one leg's on the carriage and one's on the extender, how we experience that through our muscles is very different. So very important that we turn over and switch sides. So keep that in mind with your repetitions. If you're like, oh my gosh, I'm just done, my legs are jello, a little less on one side because you know you're going to be doing it on the other. Okay, starting out, we're bending down. That leg that's on the carriage, we're extending first and then drawing back in. Push that leg totally straight and then bend back in. Stay steady here through the rest of your body. One more, and then we're going into alternating skating. One leg on the carriage, inside leg, and close, out, and close, in, and close. Good, keep going. You just have to find your rhythm here, and then you won't really have to think about it. Good, straighten out those legs and we're dropping down into those squats and back up, pull that carriage into a close. Sliding squats. more. Really make sure on these that you're pushing out far enough so that you feel like you're going evenly straight down so we don't want to be kind of like weight on one leg. We want to be evenly straight down in the middle, right? All right, and into those weighted metal splits. Nice straight leg variation to really get all those muscles. My booty completely loves those exercises. We're going to come down now, carefully off the side of your former, and we're going to come into lunges. So we're going to take that inside leg that's closest to the former. We're going to place that knee on, and we're going to place uh, the heel so it's up against the or the foot so it's up against the shoulder rest. The other leg, we're going to kind of move out, give ourselves some distance, but my knee is about at the edge of the carriage here. Now, I'm going to keep my hands up. Usually, we put our hands down onto that bar, but today we're going to keep it really upright, and we're going to press back into that lunge, keeping that front leg bent, and then squeezing everything back up. So, think about pressing down and then pushing down through this front leg to lift you back up.
Two more. Now, we're gonna switch that up. We're gonna press back in the same way, and how far you go with this is gonna really depend on flexibility, right? So we're gonna press back into a lunge. We're gonna hold here, this is our starting place. Now I want you to press the front leg as straight as possible, and then draw back in with control. Three more. Interesting in those muscles, isn't it? Lift it back up. Now climb across your carriage or walk around, whatever suits you. We're coming to that other side. So again, let's line up. We're gonna get that foot up against the shoulder rest. We're gonna come to a place where our knees about on the edge of our closed carriage here. Get ourselves a little distance away from the carriage. And we're gonna press back into that lunge, keeping it bent, the knee is over top of the ankle, and then draw back up. Really using that outside leg to press back, press into that foot and squeeze here to lift up. So you're gonna hear, feel that butt cheek with that leg that's on the floor. Two more. If you're feeling in your low back, although your low back is working a little bit, but if you're feeling it there, you might need to really reevaluate your position, take that energy and focus to this leg. Okay, right here, we're gonna press back into that lunge. Now press that front leg straight, bend back into that starting place, and continue. Small motion, really effective. Send those legs out long, still keeping parallel. We're going to go into down, up from here. 
Press those legs down, lift back up. And again, you can get a nice stretch on this way. Just make sure you're not peeling up or bending through the legs. Keep them nice and straight. And let it fold forward as much as it's comfortable with the hips and low back, right? Good, right here we're gonna come into frog. So those feet are gonna open up into a V, knees in a V, not much wider than the shoulders. And we're gonna press out. Oh, just kidding, before I get into frog, I wanted to do a little articulation while we're still keeping things parallel. Sorry, I've led you astray. We're gonna take the legs out straight. We're gonna come into long spine. So if we're gonna lift up. We start to peel up the spine when those feet are at 90 degrees on top of the hips. Peel up one vertebrae at a time. Now. Separate the feet about hip distance apart, almost like the rollover, and then we're going to articulate down through the spine one vertebrae at a time. Now, when you're planted here, press those feet down and circle back in, bring them together. Let's do that again. One more. Good. Now we'll come into the frog. Come into that V-shaped position here. We're going to press out or flex through the heels. We'll take a couple exercises where we're now externally rotated through the feet rather than parallel. Last one, press out long. Now lift up tall, point through those toes, but stay externally rotated. So your knees are facing out, your heels are together, toes are separated, and we're pressing down and up from here. Zip those legs together to a solid unit. Your range of motion here might be different than when you're parallel. One more, and then while we're externally rotated, we're going to go into short spine. So we'll start out with those legs out. Short spine is just beloved by people, right? We're going to peel up here, allow the spine to come off, reach forward, and then we're going to bend the knees in towards the base, roll down one vertebrae at a time until we're planted, and then finally extend the legs out long. Again, so rather than lifting up from point of 90 degrees, we're going to allow ourselves to reach and stretch forward and then articulate up. So where we place the weight is different, bend the knees down, roll down through the spine, press the legs out. Really allow yourself to stretch all the way forward, then peel up, articulate, bend down, be in control of that carriage. Don't let it shoot out underneath you. Let's take two more. Last one.
Good. Hold the legs here. We're going to go into the opening. Open out and up. Ooh, nice stretch to the legs and then squeeze back in together. Beautiful. Now lifting the legs straight up. We're going to end with hip circles in both directions, and we are done with this reformer class. Press the legs straight down, open and circle all the way around, keeping it even on both sides of the body. Going through those toes, long through the legs. Now reverse direction, hip circles up, open out to the side, reach, wrap around, down, squeeze the legs together and lift as one unit. Keep that pelvis planted. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'm so glad that I could offer you a little sample, an example of what my reformer classes look like in my online studio. Remember that on Patreon, you can join me for reformer, springboard, bar, mat pilates, and more. Come check it out if you are interested in those online classes. And of course, come and join me anytime right here on YouTube for any of those formats. I'll see you guys next time in the studio.